Imagine a scenario where the U.S. Navy, the most powerful naval force in the world, sets its sights on the United Kingdom. What would this conflict look like? How would the British Isles respond to an all-out assault from the U.S. Navy? Today, we dive deep into this hypothetical situation, analyzing the strategies, obstacles, and implications of such a conflict. But let's be clear, this is purely a hypothetical scenario. A thought experiment that aims to explore military capabilities and defense strategies. Number one, historical context and geopolitical landscape. The historical relationship between the U.S. and U.K. is deeply rooted in both cooperation and conflict with impacts that extend far beyond their borders. Initially, the British Empire established a colonial presence in North America during the early 17th century, creating the foundation for what would later become the United States. By the time of the American Revolution in the late 18th century, Britain controlled 13 colonies on the eastern seaboard. These colonies became a critical part of Britain's mercantilist economy, providing raw materials and serving as a market for British goods. However, tensions grew over issues like taxation without representation, ultimately leading to the Declaration of Independence in 1776. The subsequent Revolutionary War not only resulted in American independence, but also marked the beginning of a new global power dynamic. The geopolitical landscape following the war saw the UK and US develop into rivals at times, particularly during the War of 1812, which was partly sparked by British interference in American trade and maritime activities. This conflict was one of the few occasions where the U.S. and U.K. faced off militarily, leading to critical battles on both land and sea. However, by the mid-19th century, both nations began to focus more on their respective interests. Britain, with its global empire, and the U.S., with its westward expansion and emerging industrial power. The U.K. maintained its position as a dominant naval power through the 19th and early 20th centuries, leveraging its control over strategic maritime routes, vast colonial holdings, and powerful Royal Navy. Meanwhile, the U.S. underwent rapid industrialization, expanding its own naval capacity, especially under the vision of Alfred Thayer Mahan, who advocated for naval dominance as a means of projecting power globally. By the time of World War I and World War II, the U.S. and U.K. emerged as allies, fostering a special relationship that has endured through NATO and other defense agreements. The U.K.'s geographical size might seem small, yet its strategic importance is immense. The British Isles sit at the gateway to the North Atlantic, controlling access between the Atlantic Ocean and the European continent. Throughout history, this position has allowed Britain to defend its borders effectively and control critical shipping routes. Meanwhile, the U.S. has developed the largest blue water navy capable of projecting power on a global scale, with a network of bases and alliances that allow it to operate effectively anywhere in the world. The post-World War II period saw the U.S. supplant the U.K. as the world's preeminent naval power, a transition that was marked by both collaboration and competition. Number two, the U.S. Navy's invasion strategy. The U.S. Navy's invasion strategy would be an unprecedented show of force, leveraging its global reach and cutting-edge technology. The strategy would center around an aggressive and well-coordinated use of its carrier strike groups, CSGs, which are the cornerstone of U.S. naval power. Each CSG typically includes a Nimitz-class or Ford-class supercarrier capable of deploying over 75 aircraft ranging from F-A-18 Super Hornets to F-35 Lightning II Stealth Fighters. The carriers function as floating air bases, providing both air superiority and strike capabilities across vast distances. The first phase of an invasion would likely involve using these carriers to project air power, establishing control of UK airspace to suppress British air defenses and military infrastructure. In addition to carriers, guided missile destroyers, like the Arleigh Burke class and cruisers, would be utilized to maintain a defensive perimeter around the fleet while also launching precision Tomahawk cruise missiles to target UK military installations, air bases, and radar systems. The destroyer's Aegis combat system is designed for multi-layered air and missile defense, providing protection against UK counterattacks, including potential anti-ship missile threats and aircraft. Submarines would play a pivotal role in the invasion strategy. 
The U.S. Navy's Virginia-class and Ohio-class submarines could perform a variety of missions, including reconnaissance, covert insertion of special operations forces, and anti-submarine warfare to hunt British submarines. These submarines would also be critical for launching stealthy strikes against high-value targets on shore with cruise missiles, as well as for blockading U.K. ports to disrupt maritime trade and military supply lines. Amphibious assault ships such as the WASP class and America class would be essential for deploying Marine Expeditionary Units, MEUs, to secure beachheads and coastal installations. These ships can transport helicopters, MV-22 Ospreys, and F-35Bs for vertical landings bypassing heavily defended ports. Once a beachhead is secured, these Marines would be able to rapidly establish a forward operating base, creating a staging ground for further land-based operations. To ensure safe transit across the Atlantic, the U.S. Navy would need to establish complete maritime and air superiority along the route. This might involve using P-8 Poseidon maritime patrol aircraft to detect and neutralize enemy submarines, as well as long-range bombers like the B-1B Lancer and B-2 Spirit to carry out deep strikes against strategic targets throughout the UK. Logistics would be a key focus for the U.S. strategy, requiring continuous resupply of fuel, ammunition, and food for a sustained operation. The U.S. Military Sealift Command would mobilize its fleet of supply and transport ships to ensure that the forces remain fully equipped and capable of maintaining operational tempo. Electronic warfare would also play a critical role. The U.S. Navy could employ electronic warfare aircraft like the EA-18G Growler to disrupt U.K. communications, radar, and missile guidance systems. Cyber warfare units would attempt to disable the UK's digital defenses and military command and control networks, creating confusion and reducing the UK's ability to effectively respond to the invasion. Number three, UK's defense, the British response. The UK's defense in the face of a potential U.S. naval invasion would be multi-layered and highly strategic, leveraging advanced technology, well-trained personnel, and a geographic advantage. The Royal Navy, though smaller in fleet size compared to the U.S., possesses state-of-the-art vessels that maximize their combat potential. The UK's two Queen Elizabeth-class aircraft carriers, HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales, serve as powerful platforms for both offensive and defensive operations. Each carrier can deploy up to 36 F-35B Lightning II stealth fighters capable of vertical takeoff and landing, making them agile in countering enemy forces and providing air cover. Key to the Royal Navy's defensive strategy are the Type 45 destroyers, known for their advanced air defense capabilities. Equipped with the Sea Viper missile system and powerful radar technologies, these destroyers can track and engage multiple aerial threats simultaneously, including incoming missiles and aircraft. This allows them to act as an air defense shield for the fleet, providing coverage over vast areas of the ocean. The Royal Navy also has astute class nuclear-powered submarines which are designed for stealth and equipped with Tomahawk cruise missiles. Their ability to operate covertly would allow them to counter U.S. naval vessels and potentially disrupt supply lines. The Royal Air Force would be another cornerstone of defense with its highly advanced fleet of Eurofighter Typhoons and F-35B Lightning II jets. The Typhoon is known for its versatility, capable of high-speed interception and ground attacks, making it a formidable force in both offensive and defensive air operations. The F-35Bs, being stealth-capable, would perform critical reconnaissance, precision strikes, and air dominance missions. Combined, these aircraft can provide rapid response to any threat over UK airspace and beyond. The UK's air defense network is sophisticated, integrating radar systems, surface-to-air missiles, and coordination centers that ensure fast, coordinated responses to threats. The Sky Saber missile defense system, which recently replaced the older Rapier system, enhances the UK's ability to intercept incoming missiles or aircraft. It's designed to be mobile and rapidly deployable, covering large areas and providing layered protection alongside other systems like the Land Scepter. Geography plays a crucial role in the UK's defense. The British coastline is rugged with narrow straits, cliffs, and unpredictable tidal patterns, making it difficult for any naval force to approach undetected or to stage an effective amphibious landing. 
The shallow waters and hidden sandbanks around much of the coastline are navigational hazards that have claimed many shipwrecks throughout history, posing significant risks to large, unfamiliar vessels. Additionally, the UK has numerous fortified coastal areas and defensive infrastructure that could serve as strong points in any resistance effort. The UK's strategy would not just rely on direct naval or air confrontations. Electronic warfare and cyber defense capabilities would be used to jam communications, mislead targeting systems, and counteract any digital incursions. The integration of all branches, the Royal Navy, RAF, and British Army, would form a comprehensive defense grid that aims to delay, disrupt, and repel any invasion force. Number four, geographic and strategic challenges. The UK's geographic landscape poses significant strategic challenges for any invading force. The British Isles are surrounded by rough waters with the North Sea, the English Channel, and the Irish Sea acting as natural barriers. These waters are not only narrow, but also filled with strong tides, sandbanks, and submerged rocks, creating treacherous conditions for navigation. The coastline itself is rugged and irregular, marked by steep cliffs, rocky shores, and numerous natural harbors and coves that offer defensive opportunities. Such terrain is highly favorable for defensive positioning, as it allows British forces to conceal artillery, missile batteries, and radar systems along the coastline, enabling them to strike at approaching naval vessels and aircraft. The unpredictable weather of the North Atlantic further compounds the difficulty of launching a large-scale amphibious assault. Heavy fog, frequent storms, and rough seas can significantly disrupt naval formations and hinder landing operations, particularly for amphibious vehicles and smaller landing craft. These conditions would make it difficult for the U.S. Navy to safely navigate and maintain coordinated assault waves and adverse weather could disrupt communication, reduce visibility, and delay troop movements. The U.K.'s narrow straits, such as the English Channel, provide natural choke points, allowing British coastal defenses to concentrate their firepower and limit the maneuverability of large U.S. vessels. Coastal batteries and sea mines would be positioned to exploit these choke points, causing bottlenecks and increasing the risk of damage to approaching fleets. The island's interior geography, characterized by hills, rivers, and urban areas, also offers natural obstacles to ground forces, complicating any potential inland advancement after a beachhead is established. Number five, potential outcomes and diplomacy. Any hypothetical conflict between the U.S. and U.K. would have massive diplomatic and geopolitical consequences. The core of the issue lies in NATO's collective defense principle, enshrined in Article 5. This article, also called the Cornerstone of NATO, asserts that an armed attack against one member state is considered an attack against all members. Given the U.K.'s pivotal role within NATO, a U.S.-U.K. conflict would instantly engage NATO allies, including powerful European nations like France, Germany, and Italy. Such a scenario could escalate to a multi-front confrontation involving the largest Western militaries, causing a ripple effect that could destabilize not only the Atlantic region, but also global security frameworks. Beyond NATO, both countries have extensive diplomatic, economic, and intelligence-sharing partnerships. The Five Eyes Alliance, which includes the U.S., U.K., Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, stands as one of the closest intelligence-sharing alliances in the world. This intelligence network forms the backbone of Western security, and a breakdown in U.S.-U.K. relations could disrupt critical counterterrorism operations and broader global intelligence efforts. The economic interdependence between the U.S. and U.K. also acts as a strong deterrent against conflict. Both nations are among each other's top trading partners with billions in annual trade. The damage to global markets would be enormous, with financial systems in New York and London facing disruptions that would impact the world economy. Historically, both countries have preferred diplomacy, leveraging their special relationship to settle disputes and align on policy goals. Their shared democratic values and leadership roles in international institutions like the United Nations reinforce their mutual interest in avoiding armed conflict.